In this video, we're going to put the Speedtech transmission cross member back into the car. A uh, little background, we had it out to cut the replacement floor pans that we put in to make room for the brackets. The brackets used to fit with the original floor pans, but the replacement floor pans sat a little lower. So we had to take the cross member out. And I figured while I have it out, I will show you guys what it looks like, show you the components of it, and then I'll show you how to put it into the car. Stay tuned. What's up guys, my name is Dan and you're watching RestoCar, your source for DIY content to help you finish those builds. Alright, so here we have a quick look at the Speedtech cross member and sort of what you get in the package. The only thing, you, you don't get these bolts in the middle here, I'll talk about those in a second. Um, this kit is for a 70 to 74 Camaro. With this kit in these years, you don't have to modify your subframe at all, you know, meaning you don't have to drill holes or anything. Uh, with the 75 to 81 kit, you actually have to drill some new holes in your subframe. It's not a big deal, it looks pretty simple. So let's take a look at these parts close up and talk about some of the features with this. Now, just some background info, right? This is for a LS1 slash T56 swap. So uh, I have a T56 from a like 98 and up Camaro in my car. And this cross member takes all the guesswork out of getting that in there. So, and it's adjustable and it allows you to drop the transmission without taking the brackets off of the subframe. So let me show you some of that. All right, we're going to start with the passenger side here and take a look at the components and some of the features that you get with this. The driver's side is exactly the same, so we don't need to go over that. Uh, so let's jump into it. So basically, you got your cross member and the next piece that goes on is this cap that gets held on with these allen bolts and this is where you can once this is installed in the car you can take these allen bolts out this piece stays in the car mount of the bracket and then you can drop the transmission cross member and transmission without removing this or the bracket so that's really nice whenever you have uh, welded in subframe connectors like i do uh, the last thing you want to do is be uh, having to drop your subframe out or, or whatever, trying to get that transmission out. So being able to just take this down, it's pretty awesome. So now let me show you how these end caps and the brackets and all that kind of go together. So this bracket here, goes it, it, it bolts directly into place where your stock transmission cross member bolts to on the subframe. So the direction that we're looking at here, right, this is the, the front of the car up here on this side. This is going towards the rear of the car, So, and we're on the passenger side. So this gets bolted down on the top of your subframe in the exact location that your stock cross member bolts to the subframe. So this does not come with hardware for these. I supplied my own for that, which is it's going to be temporary until we get the uh, subframe sort of painted up and everything. All right, so we'll go ahead and assemble this real quick. So that goes on, Allen bolts go in place. Okay, so that piece is on and then the bracket has a slot in it and this slot goes over this and it gives you your adjustability on the transmission cross member. So with this here, you can pretty much push your engine, you know, as forward or as back as you want, as long as it's within this range here. Most engine mounts, you know, you get like an inch forward or back, you know, stuff like that from the stock position. And I'm fairly certain these brackets would accommodate all of those combinations. So again, this goes on here. And then this piece, goes on to cap that and it goes over that machined out piece as well and then you basically put your allen bolts in from this side and they go through and hold that in place so again once this is bolted to your subframe and all this is attached 
you don't have to take it off any longer to drop your transmission. Basically, you just take out these two Allen bolts. And this stays in the car and that comes down. So that's pretty much the, the gist of that. So this thing is a pretty high quality piece. Uh, it has nice features about it, like the, the, you know, the ability to drop the cross member without removing all the bracketry and all that. That's pretty cool. The thing's nice and beefy. The brackets are beefy. The parts look good. You know, that's a really nice finish. Everything's kind of machined out, looks great. The only thing that I would change with this is that I would flip these brackets over so that they go down and hang over the subframe versus sitting on top like this. And if you guys watched some of my past videos recently, you'll know why. Uh, the, the main reason is, is that I put in replacement floor pans and those replacement floor pans were stamped a bit differently and therefore they sat a little bit lower where these brackets go and I couldn't get these brackets in. So basically I had to cut the driver side and passenger side floor pans to fit these brackets. It's all good, it just took work that I didn't really, it shouldn't have had to have done. And if these, if these were mounted this way and they went down over the subframe, we wouldn't have that issue at all. Plus I think it would look a little better. It seems, I mean these, these look a little odd sticking up off the subframe like that, but it's all good, nobody really sees under there. The second thing that this would solve, and this was the actual first problem I ran to, which wasn't a big deal, was that when I, when I got this thing in the mail and I was all excited to put it on the car, it didn't fit. These didn't fit because my body mounts were basically trash. So I replaced the body mounts with some solid body mounts and everything fit good, right, with the original floor pans. So that, that was the first issue. The second one was the, the floor pan issue that I described first. So having these things flip down and shorten this up a bit to actually fit between the subframe would make this a better product in my opinion. Um, there's probably an engineering reason why it is the way it is. So, you know, maybe they can't do it that way. But for people putting in replacement floor pans, uh, you definitely just need to be aware of this, this issue, right? So, that's not gonna fit if you use the AMD replacement floor pans like I did. So you have to make it fit. And then of course, you gotta make sure your body mounts are in great shape. There were some good uh, comments on, on my videos with the floor pans and uh, about flipping the, the brackets down, which is kind of where I got that idea from. And I think it would be a great idea the only issue is, is that by the time you put these pieces on the end and you get this over here, this, this makes the overall cross member wider than the subframe. So I can't modify this bracket to make this fit between the subframe because overall it's wider than the subframe. So this would have to be something SpeedTech would have to change. They'd have to shorten this up a bit, probably extend this flange out and give us some more room there. So. But overall, we're past all that. We got body mounts, we got the floor pans cut. Everything's good. All right, so there's a quick look at the T56 cross member by SpeedTech. Uh, lots of adjustability. You can take it down without taking your bracketry off. A lot of good stuff, high quality product. You just gotta be aware of those few issues with fitment, especially if you've replaced any floor pans. As far as the body mounts go, uh, you should have good body mounts anyway, so it's not that's not a big deal. Just uh, keep in mind that you'll want to stick with the stock size body mounts and not the half size body mounts unless you want to do some uh, modifications to your floor pans. So let's go ahead and get this thing back in the car.
All right, guys, a couple install tips for this. Uh, first one is you jack your transmission up to get it higher than the cross member if you can. Then you saw I had to take off one bracket. I took off this side, doesn't matter which side, but basically took off a bracket to fit it up in there. And then basically you install all this stuff and leave it loose because what happens is when you pull these in or tighten them up, it's gonna pull that bracket this way a little bit. And of course you need to be able to go back and forth as well, depending on where you put it. Now there's also some adjustability on the trans as well. So you can see here with these bolts, I can go forward or backward a little bit. And you can see with my particular engine mounts and where I have it positioned, I'm pretty much in the forward spot here. This cross member would allow this thing to go back another couple inches. So there you have it, and you can see the floor pan work. We have about a quarter inch of clearance between that bracket and I don't know if you can see this one over here, but it's about the same. We got some pretty good clearance. We'll take care of all of the wells that you see under here once we get the car flipped over so that we can do the underside. There's still a lot of work to do to clean up under here. Um, all right, so you can see the transmission cross member is attached to the transmission. And if you wanted to service this, you basically take these two Allen bolts out here and you take these two bolts out here and the whole thing comes down. So you leave your brackets in place. You don't have to do anything with that. All right. That's it, she's back in. Jack stands out of the way. Real quick, so I'm planning on, like I said, I'm planning on welding my subframe to these subframe connectors. So this part's already done. I've got the subframe lined up and everything. So I know this is where it's gonna be whenever I take it out and put it back in. And then we're gonna weld all this. And that's where this becomes nice is that, you know, you can just drop this down without ever having to worry about removing these brackets. Although it's not impossible to remove these either. Right, one more tip is to make sure the bolts that you're using to attach these brackets to the subframe can be pulled out with the subframe attached to the car. So you only want to use the length of bolt that's necessary to actually get the nut on. So keep that in mind, especially if you got welded subframe connectors because you're not getting this back out. You'd have to cut those bolts you know, as you lift them up out. All right, that is it for this one. We got the cross member back in the car and the jack stand out of the way. So we're good to go there. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing because we're gonna have a lot more of content like this. If you do subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get alerts whenever we post new videos. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below and we'll get back to you. If you have builds of your own, whether it's forums, uh, YouTube, anything like that, go ahead and post some links down below so we can check them out. We'll see you in the next one.